Hello viewers. In this program, we'll be trying to look at tone, mood, attitude, and persona. These are words that frequently find themselves in poetry and particularly paper two, question three. So I'm therefore going to take a bit of time to try and explain each of them and at least provide a few adjectives that work for each of them. Before we start it all, let it come to our realization that certain adjectives overlap. We can have an adjective that works for tone, maybe it finds itself in mood or even in attitude. So that one will be dependent on which kind of poem one is handling at that particular time. So maybe let's start with tone. Tone. So wherever somebody is asking you about tone, it is the quality of voice which expresses the poet's or the speaker's feelings about a subject, a situation, a person or a thing. So that feeling is realized in the voice and that voice is very important. So in as much as we have used the word feelings there, the bigger part that we need to take into account or what we need to stress there is the voice, quality of voice. So talking about the quality of voice, for example, I instruct a student, get out. And then I say, get out. You can get the difference in those voices. The second one, as some emergency, and I'm sure if it was a student seated, would simply be on his feet out. So the voice could be explained in that way. And then I'm saying that this is how a poet would be trying to have message represented or message received by that quality. And that quality comes by virtue of the arrangement of words, the arrangement of stanzas to bring out the information that is intended. There are a number of adjectives that we could use to describe tone, the quality of tone. For example, you may decide to say that it was reconciliatory tone. Maybe somebody, people have had a quarrel and then they are trying to find, to mend the difference, trying to sort their difference. You could be talking about a reconciliatory tone. You can have a formal tone. It is possible that you talk about a cynical tone. It is possible you even talk about a resigned tone. This is a tone of giving up. It's like things are not working and so we get to resign. You give up. You give up in everything. You can talk about a cheerful tone. We can talk about defiant. You can talk about romantic and many others. In as many adjectives as we can have, it is only one or two that can be fitting a poem. You can't lump all these into one single poem. Every different poem will have its own adjective. I've only just given a few examples, but every poem that you'll be handling will be presenting itself with a different tone. And I'm sure in the subsequent videos, we are going to look at poems and their specific tones. And maybe having looked at two, three or four, I'm sure it will come clear on which adjectives we use in describing a tone in a poem. 
looking at mood, this is the prevailing atmosphere in a poem. Prevailing atmosphere in a poem is very much so diagnosed or realized by looking at the arrangement that the poem has in terms of stanzas, the length of the lines, and maybe whether it is some even pattern or an even pattern. There is a mood that is brought out by looking at that arrangement, and that is what we call prevailing atmosphere in a poem. You know, it may not be surprising that you may be realizing that certain adjectives that we already have in tone can be finding themselves in mood. But as I said earlier, it is possible that a number of them will come clear when we look at poems. Maybe I may give example of certain poems that are popular, poems that we've met now and over and over again, like I Shall Return. This is a poem by, so Mackay is talking about his insistence that he will love to be going back to his home. And when you look at that, it gives us the mood of optimism. He's been away for long from home. Home where he enjoyed his culture, his environment, his kind of music. He really wishes to be back. And in fact, as the poem concludes, you'll be hearing him say that he'll be eased of long, long years of suffering. So there is some element of optimism. So we can talk about the, the mood of optimism in that particular poem. So optimism is a, another possible. You can have a sad mood. Sad mood, for example, uh, if it's a scenario of death or extreme suffering, not actually death, extreme suffering, you can be seeing a sad mood or melancholic. Melancholic mood. It will come out if it is extreme cases of sadness. If it is death, actually, we don't have to be talking about sad or melancholic. We talk about somber, somber mood. If it is a poem that is set in a church context, like this poem, The Beard. I hope some of you can remember that this is a poem that appeared in Paper 1, 2021. It was there in Paper 1. But potentially is a poem that can find itself in Paper 2. So in this poem, The Beard, the kind of mood there is solemn. So in prayer mood, we can be having solemn, we can talk about prayerful mood. Solemn, prayerful are contexts that we get in church. And so the beard becomes a good example there. And so at least after having given you this few, they could be a guide on how we get to give a poem its mood. So let me get to the third one, attitude. Attitude has to do with the feelings. And these feelings can be in two ways. You could have the feelings of the persona towards the subject matter. It could be the feelings of the audience or reader towards the subject. So whenever they're talking about attitude, is the feelings or actually the feelings of the persona or the audience towards the subject matter. Therefore, when there'll be any question on attitude, it will have to be anything to do with the feelings. There are cases where they ask, what is the attitude of the persona? Or what is the attitude? What is your attitude? What is your feeling towards the subject matter? And some of the adjectives that we can use 
are, for example, contemptuous. You can say spiteful. You can say hateful. You can have sympathetic feeling. Yeah, so all these adjectives can come in play depending on which poem you are handling. Therefore, these three ex the, the three uh, the, the, the number of illustrations I've given you, there are one, two, three, four, are just one of the very many that you can have. But like I said earlier, you could have the adjectives in tone, finding themselves in attitude, and those ones of mood, finding themselves in, in tone. That one is likely, and that tells us how it is not likely that in the same poem you'll be asked a question on tone ask the tone or attitude. It can never happen. You'll only have one. So with these ones, they are preparing us to get to understand what it really means when you're talking about tone, when you're talking about mood and attitude. So and lastly, why can't we look at persona? So the persona is the voice in the poem. When a poet or when a writer or the artist is raising concerns over a given issue, they use a voice and that voice is the persona, the one that is telling us what we are seeing. For example, if you are reading the poem Song of Agony, there's somebody who is telling us what is happening, what is going through, how he's preparing to go to this distant place to work as a contract worker. And the hostility awaiting him. And the possibility that he will not come back. All that that we are getting is through that voice. And that voice is the persona. So whenever you get a question on who is the persona, it is important again that we look at the content, look at the lines, get to know who is speaking to us. Otherwise, it has been in the past you realize some students saying that the persona is I, which is a long gone mistake that we should not be repeating. There's no way you can have I as the person. Let's have a proper description of who that person is by what they are doing or what they are explaining. That's why at times you'll be having words like observer, narrator, like Ghana I've just mentioned, contract worker, and so on. We must be very specific in trying to define or trying to say who a persona is in any given poem. With that, viewers, we are set and ready to try and answer these particular ones if they come in the poem. I'm once again reminding you if you are viewing me for the first time, I ask you to give it a thumbs up, make a subscription and then when there are any other new videos that are coming, you are notified. Thank you.